Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Now this week, I want to look at how you make your own compost. It's the ultimate recycling system for all your garden waste, and it's brilliant. Now the first thing about composting is you need an area to do it from, if you like. And I'm gonna be showing you how we do that here, where the bays for the composting are made up of really using recycled pallets. Some of you at home won't have the kind of space I've got here and you may well be using plastic self-contained composting bins but the principles I'm talking about here are exactly the same. It applies across the board. So what's really important with composting are the ingredients that you put into the heap. And the key to the whole process is getting the mix right, is getting it varied so that you've got a whole range of materials. If you just chuck in grass clippings and grass clippings and grass clippings, you get sludge. It's horrible, it's not gonna be much good to you. So it's about getting a varied mix of cuttings from the garden. We're at a time of year now when things have to be cut back as they go over, and it's these sort of materials added, added to grass clippings, but also other materials that are the key to success. So before you take all that material and you put it into the compost, there's one technique that I've learned works brilliantly, and this is your secret weapon in this exercise. It's a pair of garden shears. It seems like hard work to suggest chopping everything up that goes into the heap using these, but if you do, it breaks down so much faster and it just speeds the process up massively. So with that chopped up material, you're going to be creating layers and that's absolutely key to the whole process when you're composting, building up the layers of material and interspersing it with something like cardboard. And I find that cardboard, if you like, is my secret weapon. That seems to build the heat and build the energy that you need for the, all the material to break down really effectively. Now ideally, when you put layers of cardboard in, it's slightly damp. Moisture in the heap is just as important as keeping the thing not too wet and not too dry. And when you're making this arrangement, I like to think of it, you have to bear with me on this one, think of it almost like a lasagna. Uh, so the sheets, of, the sheets of cardboard are your pasta sheets and the filling, if you like, the bolognese, is all the chopping that you've just been doing with the other material. So now those, ch those clippings have gone down, it's a case of putting another layer of cardboard on top and just repeating that process on and on. But there are some key things not to put on a compost heap. Anything cooked that's come from the house, uh, even cooked vegetables, just avoid them. So the things that are good to go on are vegetable peelings, that kind of thing. But just avoid any meats or oils because you just end up with problems with rats. And the second thing, which is a really important one, is don't put really aggressive weeds onto the heaps because even on larger heaps like these, they just don't get hot enough to, to zap everything. So dandelions, bindweed, ground elder, put those in the green bin and let the council deal with them. So 
So basically you carry on that process building up those layers until your bin is full. When it is full you have to leave it for a certain amount of time, a few months at least to, to build up some heat and then in an ideal world you take that into all those contents and you empty them into a, another bin next door. If that isn't the case and you don't have a spare bin then dismantle what you have created and put it back in again. Again, it seems like a lot of work and effort, but if you do do that, it'll speed up the process so much. So as you're filling your bin and you're working your way up with those layers, in the interim periods when you're waiting to do the next layer, cover the surface up with something. I use old carpet and old, old recycled sheets of plastic and they're weighed down with stones essentially just to stop them blowing away. But what that does is twofold. It traps the moisture within the heap, but also it traps the heat. And one of the greatest joys, I probably need to get out more in my life, but is, is actually as this heat builds up, it generates heat. And you can really feel the heat on top of the, the, the plastic. It tells you that something is going on in there. And I just wanted to show you a halfway house of a heap that actually was freshly turned yesterday and this is one that had been built up probably over the course of the summer into about 20 layers and it was turned into this heap. You can see from this you've got bits of cardboard that are in the stages of semi-breaking down, covered in earthworms which are breaking, breaking down the material, but also you've got the larger stems, the bits of, the bits of woodier herbaceous material which needs a second cycle before it fully breaks down but even in a short space of time of three or four months you're looking at something which is a semi-compost if you like. And so this is what we're aiming for this is vintage compost that was made started at least 15 months ago beautiful lovely friable material it's gold dust it really is where do we use this? Well, we use this on the borders to mulch the surface of the soil because as it breaks down, it releases nutrients into the ground that the plants absorb and it also acts as a good weed suppressant. We can't make enough of this material and once you get into the routine of making it yourself, you'll never look back. Everyone has their own methods of making compost and for me, my secret weapon is the cardboard. I learnt the hard way, it took a while to work it out, but I'm there now. If you've got your own secret weapon, I would love to hear what you use, so why not leave a comment below.